Have you ever wanted a vegetable garden without all the hassle? One that's easy to weed and water without spending an arm and a leg? One that's built without a wood shop or a degree in agriculture? How about turning your chain link fences into a garden? I wanted a garden, but I hated to weed. Raised bed gardens are easier to weed and you can mow around them, but they can be a lot of trouble to build. In Houston, where I live, sunlight is the enemy and plants have to be watered often. What I needed was a simple raised bed garden that was easy to water. Well, my dad had an old chicken yard with a chain link fence. So, these instructions are basic guidelines. You are freed to modify them for your own garden. Materials, you'll need a chain link fence. Then landscaping timbers, which run about $5 each. You can make your garden walls out of stone or sheet metal and spend a fortune if you want. Cinder bricks run about $1.70 at Walmart. Cable ties, the 11 inch ones are good. A bag of 100 are about $6 at Walmart. You'll only need about 30. Roundup or weed killer. Topsoil, now that's dirt, sand, garden mix, whatever you like. Soaker hoses, the cheapest ones will do at Dollar General. Hose timer and splitters, the number of those depends on how your garden is laid out. First, you have to decide where to put your garden. Notice the water spigot I've circled next to the gate. If you build by a water outlet, then you don't need to run a hose to your garden and accidentally mow it later on when you're mowing the grass. Number two, decide the width of your garden. Number three, stack your timbers parallel to your fence. I started with three, one on top of the other. You can use more. Number four, plant your cinder bricks at the end of your timbers. Number five, if your garden is long enough, place a cinder brick between the timbers for that extra length. Step six, now you are going to cable tie your timbers together. Feel free to take the ties and attach them one to the other to make them longer. You can also use more than one around those timbers for extra strength. Then seven, you're going to cable your timbers to the bricks. Once you've done that, you're going to pull them all tight so they hold snugly. Now, you're going to cable your bricks to each other. Number nine, you're going to cable your bricks to the fence. Number 10, cable that middle brick to the fence too, if your garden is long enough. It'll be a stretch, so you'll probably use several ties, but you won't see them once you've got dirt in there this next step is optional. Step 11, you're going to round up the area that you've enclosed. You can use white vinegar, salt, and soap if you don't want to use Roundup. Look on Google for a good grass killer recipe. Go on, poison that grass. You can also poison it on the other side of your fence. This next step is a great time to draft anyone you know who needs a good back-breaking bit of work. Step 12. You are going to fill your garden with topsoil. Whatever kind you prefer, if you're cheap like me, you can do like it says on Google and put a layer of cardboard, then newspaper, to save money on your dirt. Then you can find out that the stinking newspaper doesn't dissolve into the soil and it forms a disgusting black layer that has to be dug up and hauled off to the road. So, you can pay for your topsoil or get dirty and ticked off. This particular garden used about three cubic yards of topsoil. 
So remember, it's going to shrink down once it gets watered. You can see here one side of the fence garden. The other side of the garden. Note again that wonderful water spigot that's going to keep your plants from scorching in the Texas heat. Step 13, attach a soaker hose and arrange it on your garden. Laying a soaker hose is a form of self-expression. I'll tell you about the tires on the other side in just a minute. Here's the other side with the soaker hose. Note the dirt beginning to settle now that it's been watered. Step 14. Hose splitters allow the water to be divided however you need it on your garden. The timer, circled in red on the left, shuts off when the water inks through, but note to the wise, be sure and use your cell phone timer so you don't leave your water running overnight. I told you I'd tell you about those tires. A fence has two sides, so here's an example of using tires to plant okra. The local auto parts store was delighted for me to haul off those tires for free. Yep, me being cheap again, I used a layer of cardboard first and then newspaper. Then I added dirt, a soaker hose, and watered it. It looks so nice. Then the newspaper, of course, didn't break down and caused those tires to fill up like little swimming pools. I had to dig out all of that stinking newspaper and put in new topsoil all over again. Now that you've got your garden set up and your tires full, it's time, step 15, to plant your garden. Remembering to plant climbing plants near the fence. Check out which plants are going to bush out or spread. Remember the season and what to plant. Step 16. Once they sprout, you can use mulch around your plants to prevent weeds. I used shredded leaves from the yard, then had to dust for bugs that might have come with them. Remember, seven dust is hard on bees and may affect your pollination. Two months later, left to right, you got tomatoes and cucumbers. I should not have planted the tomatoes next to those cucumbers because they're both vines and they are strangling each other, but they're growing great. The other side is working out better. Bottom to top, squash and green beans. One is spreading out and the other is growing up the fence. And now finally, the baby okra is coming up in the tires. Now it's time to find recipes for all your fresh vegetables. Ain't nothing tastes better. Be sure and share with all your friends and your loved ones.